Okay, this is a video to show you how to scrape metadata for Emulation Station version 2. As you can see on the screen, Emulation Station does have a nice graphical interface to show you the data and it has an inbuilt scraper itself and it will bring through the image and these nodes like developer, publisher, genre, a description down the bottom here and it will also convert the sometimes obscure abbreviated file names of the ROM to a readable name like Earthbound, Jurassic Park, Mortal Kombat, Pilot Wings, that sort of thing, rather than the actual file name so it's a lot clearer and it's um, much easier to use. But there are some drawbacks with the uh, inbuilt scraper in Emulation Station. There are a lot of reports of it taking a long time to run, um, sometimes it'll just hang and it needs restarting, it's quite sluggish and sometimes unresponsive. Whilst the results are great, it, it's just not necessarily for everyone. So an alternative way is to um, use a, another scraper, which is designed for Emulation Station, and it will bring in uh, your image, whichever image you want to use for the for the game, whether it's a title, um, just a snapshot, or artwork, or whatever you want to use. And it will also convert the sometimes odd file names into readable names like this, so you can see exactly what game it is you're playing. It won't, at the moment anyway, it won't bring in your description and it won't bring in these extra nodes that you've got here. So it is a bit limited, but if you want a solution in the meantime, whilst um, you wait for emulation stations to improve, um, it is an option and it is very, very fast in comparison. It'll only take about sort of five to ten minutes to bring in the images for your given um, console or, or main and uh, the actual generation of the gameless.xml is practically instant so it's a much quicker way to get up and running and a nice user interface. This will be split into two parts, you've got part one which is grabbing the images and then part two which is really generating the xml feed that's based on uh, the names and the images that you put into um, emulation station. My example is going to run through with RetroPy, so it's more specific to the Raspberry Pi version of Emulation Station, but it would work with any Emulation Station, whether it's on the PC or whatever system you're running it on. So the first part is to grab the images, and to do that, the uh, best bet is go to uh, mumovers.com, and you can register for free here. You get a free account, and when you've got a free account, you download their main bit of software on the Downloads button on the left here, it's called ME Movies Download Service, and here ME Movies DSU. Click that, and you've got a download option up here. That just downloads the software. It's pretty small, few meg, and you install it as normal. Then, when you install it, you run it um, here, and you get some options on the screen here. There are three tabs. I've got version 2.1 running here. And on the login information, I've logged in, so I've got access to their database. And because free accounts have 250 meg, I think it's a day, it's say here somewhere. Um, ba, 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 ba. There we go, yeah, 250 meg a day. Um, you may have to stage your downloads over a series of days, or you can subscribe to their site and get unlimited downloads for as long as you want. I think a year is about $30 for as much as you want, as often as you want or you can get a monthly um, account if you don't want to spend that much or just do 250 meg a day over a series of days. So you log in after you've created your account um, you can test the login there just checks my logins all, all okay. I've paid for the extra unlimited download so I can do this as, as often as I want. Under the options you can pretty much leave those um, they're fine as they are, you won't need to change those and on the download screen is where you grab your ROM data. Now if we do this for MAME as an example, and MAME and FBA, which is Final Burn Alpha, which is mostly used for Neo Geo ROMs, I think, um, work best because they convert the name properly. It will do consoles as well, but it doesn't rename the name, it just generates the file um, without the extension at the end and um, sort of links to the images. So whilst it works, it's, it's not as good as the MAME and um, FBA version. So I'm going to choose see on here system drop down I want to do MAME so I'm going to select MAME and here the available media this is going to say what I want to download if I choose all our artwork it will download from advert types all the way to title types at the bottom there it won't do any of the videos not that you need videos for emulation station anyway um, or at least not on the 
Raspberry Pi version. So if it was only titles I want to download, I'd just select titles, um, and that's probably what I would use. But just to demonstrate, I'm going to choose all artwork. And first thing it says, where are the ROMs? Now your Raspberry Pi should be attached at this point, and you could connect wirelessly, but it's going to be a lot more reliable if, for this, you use a cable. Um, I know the IP that my Raspberry Pi is connected to, and hopefully you can find out um, what yours is anyway. You've probably done this before. So when you know the IP, you can type in uh, on the start run here, backslash, backslash, and the IP address, and I know mine is 192.168.0.103. Hit enter and it pops up with the default shared uh, folders of BIOS and ROMs. Now, on ROMs, if you right mouse click and choose Map Network Drive, choose any drive, it doesn't matter which one. I'm going to choose Z. I'm not going to reconnect it, log on because I don't need this happening every time you use a computer, it's just for this. So, Z, hit finish, and now the computer has said, Right, Z drive is my Raspberry Pi ROMs directory and I don't need that window anymore, I can close that. Now back to the download service utility, I can hit browse and on that I can say I want the ROMs directory, the Z drive, expand that and I need the main ROMs, click main. And that's pretty much it, hey OK. And now it says Z main and yours will be whatever drive letter you've chosen and main. I don't need to scan subfolders because they're all in that folder. And I'm going to download the images to my computer, and you can just pick a folder on your computer. I've picked this one, but you can pick anything you like. And that's pretty much it. Hit go, and you'll see that this starts connecting to its server, and it also scans the ROM folder on the Raspberry Pi. has a bit of a think, and it sort of chugs through them all. Um, it does use a local file to say how far it's got, so you can cancel this, and it will remember how far it's got through, and then it continue the next time you want to um, start up. Depending on how many images, it's going to take anything between maybe a two or three minutes to a couple of hours. It can take quite a while. I've done some of these earlier, so if you can imagine this just completing and then you get a bit of a noise and it says, oh yeah, I've finished, um, you can stop the program. I'll just hit cancel at the moment. And then I'll go to this directory here, ddata at ROMs, but that's wherever you want on your computer, whatever you've chosen, which is here, and it splits it up into the systems that you've downloaded. I'm going to go into MAME and I want to use title image. You can see here if I open titles they look like this as an example um, or I could choose uh, snapshots and they look sort of in-game snapshots and they look like this but you can choose whichever is good. Um, I'm going to use title and I'm going to copy the title that's downloaded, the images that's downloaded across to the Raspberry Pi and the script that we're going to use to create the metadata wants the images in the same directory as the ROMs. So we can do that by going start again on computer. You created that Z drive or whatever drive. Go into the Z drive. I want main. Okay, here's all my ROMs and just because I'm going to demo it rather than do the lot, I'll copy I don't know, all of them up to about the Bs. Dra right mouse that, drag that over here press copy and um, we should get a little dialog, it's copying two mega files across, doesn't take very long they go across to the Raspberry Pi that's done so now the, my Raspberry Pi folder has ROMs and it has images for most of those ROMs okay so now we're going to use terminal to get into or SSH into the Raspberry Pi itself and run the script the script we're going to use is from webspace.lenscritic.com forward slash name and it's called name gen xml. Okay, so if I open up um, Raspberry Pi, this is a program called Putty. Um, most Windows users probably use this to access the Raspberry Pi. Again, my IP is 183. Uh, yours may well be different, so just put in whatever IP. Yours is the port is always 22. If I hit open, I then get prompted to log into the Pi. Okay, so I'm logging in as user pi, and the password will be raspberry. Okay, so we're just logging in there. Now we're going to check what directory we're in. So this is the home directory, and this is where we're going to install uh, this script. A uh, quick and easy way of doing it is to copy this line here, right mouse copy, 
and this is going to download the file from the website uh, to the Raspberry Pi. If you just tap the right mouse button, it will paste the details in there, hit enter, and it sort of checks it can do it, and downloads it, hits OK, there we go, OK. So that's downloaded. Now we're going to create a directory for it to run in, so I'm going to create a directory called GenScript, you can call it whatever you like. And then I'm going to move that file we just downloaded, which was called mamegenxml.tar.gz, into that directory, which is that one. And that's enter there. And then I'm going to move into change into that directory there. Okay, so that's the file there. Now we're going to expand it because it's a compressed um, tarball. We're going to uncompress that with tar uh, and the ver and the parameters zx vf. That's just to expand the files really, don't need to worry about that um, and put the file name, hit enter and it says right okay these are the files you've got now, now we can run it so this file will scan the ROM directory, the main ROM directory and it'll look for the images in there and it'll rename uh, or create the game list um, XML file with the proper names in and they've got an example here again on the web page which we can pretty much just copy so um, here's the main example right mouse copy, again to get it on the screen just press the right mouse and it pastes it and you can see here um, it's got a few variables in there, the first one is just saying right the Perl program is going to run this script the .pl, then it passes a ROM path which is listed here where all your ROMs are, then it passes a mode which is main as opposed to FBA or the particular um, console or a console um, and then it's saying what extensions it should be scanning for in the ROM directory and for MAME it's going to be zip and then the last one is the pipe the arrow to a file called gameless to create that gameless file in this directory so, so what we need to change there is the path because again I'm on RetroPy so my path is a bit different to this um, path for my ROMs is, if I delete that one they've got there um, it's retro part. and to check you're doing the right directory if you just type part of the name and then press tab it'll fill in the rest if it's right so it's home pi, retro pi, and then I know it's ROMs there and I know it's a main directory like that and that's it so I know my, my ROMs are in home pi, retro pi, ROMs main and yours will too if you're running retro pi. and the rest of that uh, command is correct so I can just press enter now this is where it scans through a couple thousand records and outputs the game list file. So I'll press enter now and it's finished. So that was vastly quicker than the inbuilt um, emulation station scraper. Okay, so it's generated the file and you can see it if you list the files out. Um, you can see it there, gameless.xml. Now we're going to move that into the directory that um, emulation station would be expecting for it. Uh, again, there's a bit of an example here, so I'll copy this one and then just change the pass again. Right mouse copy in here, right mouse. Okay, so I'm going to move that file into the right directory where it's expecting the game lists. And on RetroPy, the path is uh, home pi, and then it's dot emulation station, so it's hidden. And then I think it's game lists, yeah, and then it's main. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, yeah, there we go, me. Um, that's pretty much it. If I press enter there, let's move the file. And if we go into that directory, I'll just copy that out. Like that. If you highlight it, that's a copy. And then I can change into right mouse there, that directory, and I can list that directory. There's the file we just moved. And we'll have a quick look at it before we run. Uh, emulation station. Okay, so you can see it's um, let's get a good example here. Here's there's one. So we've got path home pi retro pi roms. The, now the, the rom is called 991stwar.zip, but it's worked out that that is 99 the last war. So you've got a much better name there, and you've also got a path for the image. As before, you haven't got things like description or some of those other fields. So it is lacking a little bit, but it does get the basics. Um, quit out of that with Control X. And now we can uh, run Emulation Station and see how it looks. Okay, so here we are in Emulation Station. It's fired up. 
and name was the one we were looking at. It's got uh, 2,271 games that it ran through in the script. And if we go into the name now, you can see there's a list of the games along with those images that it's downloaded and the proper name. So I'm on 99 The Last War here, which is what we just saw. It's got a proper name there, and uh, it's got the image over on the left. You can see, you get an idea of what it is. And it's converted all the names, obviously, and all of the images that I did copy across. Um, like I was saying, you could use snapshot images or general artwork or anything on this, but I've gone for um, the title screens on these to give you an idea when you're scrolling through what sort of game it is. Um, and that's a really, really quick way of getting decent metadata across. I can see the name of the game and I can see roughly what it looks like from the screenshot. And I hope that helps some people.